In this video, you'll learn how to do repetition in JavaScript using a for loop. And that's an F-O-R for loop. And what it allows you to do is repeat something for a certain number of times. In JavaScript, we have three different types of looping constructs that we usually use. Let's first go ahead and create a brand new file. New file. And I'm going to save that file. And I'm going to call it forloop.js. Now we have three different types of looping constructs in JavaScript. We have a for loop, we have a while loop, and we have a do while loop. And they're all ways to repeat code more than once. And you can specify through an expression how long you want something to repeat. The for loop says, I'm usually used when I know how many times to do something. For instance, if I want to eat 10 pork rinds, I know how many times I want to do something. So for example, if I want to eat 10 pork rinds, I know that I would do the for loop and I want something that allows me to stay in here and for 10 times I'm going to eat a pork rind. A while loop says some expression being true will keep me in this loop. So for instance, it could say as long as I'm hungry, I will eat a pork rind. And you could actually go ahead and put a counter in there also, but counters usually use for loops. And the last thing, I'm going to put parentheses around this just to be consistent. And the last one says, do while. The do says, go eat a pork rind while some condition is true. Now the difference between these is that the for loop executes for a certain number of times. The while loop will execute while something is true. And the do loop will execute and then check if something is true. So the minimum number of times a for loop will execute is zero. Because maybe I don't want to eat any pork rinds. The minimum number of times the while loop will execute is zero. Because maybe I don't want to eat any pork rinds. But the minimum number of times the do while will execute is once. Because I say do and then I go eat a pork rind, and then I ask what I want to do. So if you want something to happen at least one time, you could do a do while loop. So let's go ahead and see how the for loop works. Let's create a variable, var i count. And we could do the following. We could say i count is equal to prompt how many names do you want to enter? And so we're going to prompt the user and we're going to go get a name. var s name and then let's go ahead and do the following. Now that we know how many times you want to do it, we can say four. And we want to create a counter variable that keeps us in the loop. So we could say var i loop count equals zero. We'll start it as zero. And as long as i loop count is less than the number of names we wanted to get, we'll stay in this for loop. And then we want to make sure that the for loop counter, which we called i loop count, is updated. And notice this is the increment, a plus plus. That's a post increment. And if you need to understand increments, go look at the video made called uh, increment and decrement. So the for loop is made up of three pieces. A counter, an expression, and a modification of the counter. Let's go ahead and drop into here and we'll say s name is equal to prompt enter a name
So this loop will now start at zero. It will check to see if zero is less than the number that we're supposed to get, the number of people. It will drop into this loop and prompt, get the name, and then it will come over to here. So here's the execution of the for loop. One, two, three, four, and then instead of coming back and reinitializing the variable, it comes back to the expression five and determines whether or not it should keep doing it. Let's go watch this run and see what happens. So let's go ahead and paste in that code. We created some variables. We should see a prompt. How many names do we want to enter? Now we do have a problem because prompt always returns a string. So let's see what happens if we say a less than with that string. Let's go ahead and run it. How many names? Three names. Enter a name. Mickey, Donald, and Minnie. And that worked. Even though this was a, an integer, I'm sorry, a string, in this loop it said, you know what, I bet you meant an integer, so I'll go ahead and work with you. Now if we really want to do that correctly, I would come back over to here and I would say, parse int. Take the string value, convert it to an integer, and then use it over here. Let's try running that and see what happens. We'll come back to our browser. We'll paste, run it, three names, Mickey, Donald, and we'll do Goofy this time. And that works. So what happens on the for loop is it says, I'm going to do something for a certain number of times. This is your counter that keeps you in the loop. This is the boundary that says we're going to go up until the loop count is no longer less than I count. This is the code you're going to execute, and you can have more than one line there. And this is what is going to modify the counter. Right now we're saying add one to it. Another thing that I did in this loop is I declared the variable in the for loop. I could have actually declared all my variables outside of the loop and then in the loop just initialize that variable. Some languages support what they call block scope, meaning that if you declare the variable in the for loop, once the for loop is over, the variable doesn't exist anymore. JavaScript does not do that. So JavaScript says once you declare the variable, it's visible throughout this file. And we'll learn more about scoping later on. So this says declare the variable, come into the loop, set it to zero. As long as zero is less than whatever number I type in, do the loop, increment the variable, check to see if you do it again. Let's do something else. Let's change this. Enter the name for student, and I'm going to put I loop count. So this now, when I run it, should actually display the counter. Let's come back over to here. We'll run it. How many students? We'll do three. Enter the name for student zero, Mickey. Instantly, I don't like that. That probably should be one. Enter the name for student 1, Goofy. Enter the name for student 2, Mini. So what if instead of doing that, we wanted to actually say, enter the name for student 1, 2, and 3? Well, there's different ways we could do it. First, we could start off at number 1. And we could say, as long as the counter is less than or equal to the count, now it prints 1, two and three. Let's try that one more time and see how it looks. We'll do three. Enter the name for student one, A. For student two, B. For student three, C. The other thing we could do is we could go ahead and leave this zero, go ahead and leave that less than, 
and right here I could have put a parenthesis and said loop count plus one parenthesis. Notice the double parenthesis there. Now what you might think is that loop count gets updated, but you don't see an equal sign and you don't see the variable being reassigned a value. All we did was said loop count plus one. Let's try that and see what happens. We'll do three names, A, B, and C, and that also works. What else could we have done? Well, instead of saying loop count plus one there, which didn't modify loop count, what if we did this? What if we said, let's start loop count at one, as long as it's less than or equal to loop count, what if I said I loop count plus plus? This is our post increment. Let's run that and see what happens. Three names. Enter the name for student one. Now it says one because I loop count is one. So why didn't this say two? Well, because it's a post increment. So we'll say A. Ah, something's weird now. Enter the name for student three. What happened? Well, we did a post increment which made loop count go from one to two, but then we came up here and incremented loop count again. And that made it three. And so we could type in a value and then it gets out. So obviously that isn't going to work, but what if I did this? So this time, instead of having three pieces to the for loop, which is the variable initializer, the expression to keep you in the loop, and the modifier, I left the modifier out. Let's try running that and see what happens. Three names. Student 1A, student 2B, and student 3C. So if you notice with the for loop, you don't have to supply the increment. That makes me now wonder, what if I did this? What if I left that off? And right here I said I loop count is equal to 1. So now I didn't initialize it. I do have an expression, and I didn't increment it. Let's try it one more time and see what happens. Three names, student one, A, B, and C, and it still works. So one thing about the for loop is it's made up of three pieces, but you don't have to supply all three pieces. In fact, if I just did that, this is now what we call an endless loop, because this will just keep running over and over and over. There's no expression to get us out of the loop. So be careful with that one. Anyway, that's how the for loop works. Three pieces to the for loop. The first piece is the initializer, separated with the semicolon. The second piece is the expression, separated with the semicolon. And the third piece is the modification of the counter. And you use the for loop when you know how many times you want to do something.